This week, we visit the impossibly blue water of Exuma, Bahamas. Hey, uh, Bobby. Yeah, Stan? Why are we on this island? I don't know, Stan. Is this a dream? If there were a dream, there'd probably be more snacks. Maybe that boat has snacks. Guys, guys, they have snacks. Snacks, 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 snacks. What about me, guys? Flying into Exuma Bahamas, you fly over this ledge. It's where the ocean goes from incredibly deep to ridiculously shallow. In low tide, some of the spots are only a few feet deep. And that's how I kind of feel when I hit a creative block. But there is a lot going on, and then all of a sudden, I'm in the shallows. I have no way to access my internal creativity, and with that comes lack of a desire to create anything at all. It sneaks up on me like that ledge, and it can last days, weeks, or even years. I'm hoping that by coming here to Exuma and getting out of my usual routine that I can unlock some of that creativity again. Worst case, at least the, the water's nice here. The wheel's on the correct side. That's good. Usually, you get a North American style car with the wheel on the left, but you drive on the opposite side of the street here. And it's a little bit challenging to get over, but when the wheel's on the other side, at least it makes a little more sense. It gets you a little bit out of your comfort zone of driving as you normally do. The hardest part about driving on the opposite side of the road is as soon as you get out of the airport, that it just puts you into this roundabout. And you have to do everything opposite of what you would usually do. It's really beautiful here. I sure wish I had someone to share this with. So good when we get together. So great, yeah, yeah. We could, yeah, we could, yeah, we could stay here forever. Check out of time, forever and a day. We got a good, 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 good thing going on. What more could we want? Could we want? Pouring the sun, staring. Stars singing the songs in our heads Everyone, whoever you are and what do you get We've got a good, 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 good thing going on So, do you ever get creative block? How do you overcome it? I think it's mostly just made up in your head. We're going through all these scenarios, we're asking all these questions, talking about all these things. When you're constantly asking yourself, why am I doing this? What am I going to do? How am I going to do it? You know, it, it blocks you from just going out and actually doing the thing you're intending on doing. And I, in my opinion, I found that when I get like that, if I just force myself to go out and start shooting and making photos, usually I end up with something that I'm happy with. Yeah. And I'm like, why was I overthinking that in the first place? could just be in your head, you're worried you're not going to come up with something good, and it's almost like a defense mechanism to just say, oh, I don't have any ideas, I'm not going to go create something. When usually just starting is what leads you to the idea. I don't think I've ever done anything great where my intention is going, you know, hey, I'm going to do this great thing right away, I'm going to go there, execute it perfectly, and leave. It's like, <laughs> those never work out. It's usually me trying something completely different, you know, on a whim that leads me down this road where I end up making something unexpected that I didn't even plan on in the first place. And that's kind of the fun of this whole thing, you know? Yeah. Discovery. On my door, oh, I got a different kind of feeling, the kind I never had before. I thought this was quite the coincidence. 
dolphins. Yep, see the dolphins? We don't see dolphins too often out here. What a perfect, what a perfect way to spend the day just dreaming. Piggy time. Here they come. This piggy, her name is Panda. You gonna do it so we can get a good picture? Come on, there you go. Oh, that's a nice shot. Now this little girl coming out, her name's Trixie. Usually golden hour is when you're gonna get your best photos. The one major exception to this rule is if you're out here and you wanna get that nice blue water, you really need the sun nice and high so it penetrates nice and deep so you're able to get kind of that crystal clear blue water uh, Kool-Aid Windex that you see behind me. And now we're going over here to Evan to tell you how to get blue to the next level. This is how you're gonna get next level blue. So this is a circular polarizer and I'm gonna give you just a quick one minute breakdown of how exactly these work. Screw it on your lens like so. There we go. So how a circular polarizer works is essentially, you know when you put on polarized sunglasses and you remove the glare from your car window, whatever it is you're looking at, same concept just on a camera lens. Now, what makes it a circular polarizer is you need to adjust the polarizer accordingly to get the best effect. Now, here's the thing, this is a 20 millimeter lens. When you have a circular polarizer on a wider lens, it becomes more difficult to control the effect because you're covering more distance. So I would recommend if you're out shooting on a day like this and you wanna get a nice even blue sky gradient and a nice blue reflection look in the ocean, probably wanna use more of a mid-range lens like a 35 to a 50, but we're gonna make it work today on the 20. So all you're gonna do, you move the polarizer until you see the sky evenly change to this deep blue color and then you're also going to see the reflection on the water go away so it's on you to see when the effect is taking place and when it's not big difference right there so circular polarizer made easy One of the quotes that sticks with me a little bit is that amateurs wait for inspiration and professionals just yeah, get to work. And I agree with that. I feel like whenever I'm just feeling like I'm uninspired that if I get out there and I just start doing something or I get out there and start doing something different from what I usually do that eventually it all starts to link back together. Hitting the first domino. You just, if you can just knock that first one over, which is, you know, going somewhere, you know, going on, if you want to do landscape photos, just starting a hike. Start the hike, you, you don't even have to think about doing any photography, you just start, and then the whole process will build upon itself. Same thing with street photos. If I'm so worried about what I'm gonna do, it's way harder than just getting out of my car, starting to walk, and just look, and then the photos kind of come to you. If you ever suffer from creative block, just know that you are not alone. And the best way to get past it is to just get back to work. Creativity is a muscle that needs to be exercised in order to do its best work. So get out there, create, iterate, and make something for yourself. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week on another episode.